Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to season three of the Rule Thirty Four podcast. I am Jack, joined by my fellow guests, Master Solis. All right, so we are back. Uh, the last time we met was covering Crown Jewel, correct? And we are back to cover Survivor Series War Games Edition this year. Special, sort of a add-on to the Survivor Series, sort of a you know card. Especially because for a lot of people, they felt like out of the big four, Survivor Series was the one that kind of has seen a sharp decline and needed some refresher like this. But also, surprisingly, I saw a lot of people thought uh, differently. There was pretty split opinions from what I saw. Yeah, I don't get... I mean, maybe it's just a season, you know? We're in this holding pattern until WrestleMania season, which is right around the corner, Jack. Mm -hmm. Um, But I never got, you know, the the ire that Survivor Series gets. Where I think, like, SummerSlam has even... Like, I don't... SummerSlam... Like, Survivor Series has a gimmick match attached to it, like the Royal Rumble, right? Mm -hmm. What does SummerSlam have going for it, except for the fact that it's July or sometimes August? Yeah. Don't really got much to it. But we're approaching the end of the year. We're in the final days of uh, November. So, real quick, before the... You know, as we're getting towards this end of the year, crazy to think that time has passed fast. But, sir, how have you been? I've been good, Jack. We got three weeks left of the semester. We're taking our mid year I ready. Today, the kids finished 68% uh, school wide, finished the math test, and tomorrow we got to take the reading test. Mm. And over the last uh, holiday week, I got my troublesome tooth extracted from my head, and I feel good. Luckily, it's not a front tooth, so you don't even see it. All right. Well, that's good to hear. I know usually this time of the of the year as well as uh, later into the uh, later into the first half of the year are usually the busiest times because that's when you're wrapping up testing, wrapping up the semester. You know, I've seen especially with a bunch of uh, some of my other friends. You know, they're in finals weeks as well. You know, mm-hmm. very. Very time-consuming sort of time in uh, at the end of the year, as always. It's usually the busiest time. And uh, yep. for me, you know, I've just been doing well, keeping up with all my stuff, you know. Um, get, getting a bunch of stuff prepared for the end of the year, as I usually do, you know, especially when it comes to podcasts. Uh, the, the date... To a set date will be decided after this recording, but we will decide when our top 10 matches of the year list will come out. Um, on the regular edition of the podcast, I brought it up. There's our top 10 uh, albums of the year. And I also got to talk with the guys, see if there's any other top 10s they maybe want to come out with. But uh, mm. a lot of good stuff that comes out at the end of the year content-wise. Absolutely. And then it's nice to like reflect, you know what I mean? And reminisce. Really stamp the good times, absolutely. Yeah, very excited to look back, especially on this year of wrestling that just has had so much happen in one year that you kind of forget some things that even did happen at the start of this year. Goodness gracious. Like, it's crazy to me to think back and look and think that at the start of this year, Cody Rhodes was still with AEW. Wow. And, like, it's funny because you see a lot of the matches that he had, like, before he left. And I'm just like, uh-huh. those felt so much like last year that it, I don't even recognize it as this year's matches. How about this? I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but at the beginning of this year, Bobby Lashley was WWE champion. Correct. Yeah. Bobby was champion. Um, try and think of some other people who were champion at the time, like, at the very start of this year. Um isn't it? Well, wait, no. She wasn't at the... Wait, when did she win it? Charlotte was champion at the start of this year. That's what I remember. But I couldn't remember when Ronda... I think Ronda won it at WrestleMania. Uh, Ronda... Who did she beat? Charlotte. Ah, I see. Yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. That sounds about right. And wild to think that was in the same calendar year that we are current. Hey, Throughout the us talking about Survivor Series War Games, I want to pull it, point out um, how m- many decisions were clearly Triple H's design versus like if this was a, a Vince McMahon run show. Hey, Jack, at the beginning of this year, Vince McMahon was running the show. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Oh, wait. 
I got it wrong. Charlotte actually defeated Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania. Oh, that sounds even more accurate. I don't remember when she lost it, though. That is the only thing I can't remember. Hey, yeah, and uh, wait, who, when, did, when did she lose it? Now, I think it might have been at WrestleMania Backlash. To live? No. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, that's right. It was at Money It was at Money in the Bank that Charlotte finally lost the title because Liv cashed in. See, it's, it's so crazy to think that that all happened in this year, especially because of how, if you want to say, short-lived it was. Ah, so Rondo beat her, but Liv cashed in on her. Yeah. Oh, boy, that's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, what's it called, though? As I was looking at, like, uh, the list of matches that happened at this year's WrestleMania, another crazy thing that happened. Though it, there's some technicalities because he is injured, we are likely going to reach the end of 2022 and the start of 2023 with RK Bro still being intact. <laughs> is that two years later, like after your prediction that they would break up? Yeah, it's, it, we've gone so far where I predicted, oh yeah, they're going to be broken up by now and it's just not happened. It has not happened. Um, injury notwithstanding. Now, I think I've heard that Riddle and Elias have recently begun to tag. Yeah, they're, they, funny enough, they're actually going to challenge for the titles next week on Raw, despite barely becoming a team. Do you think that sort of partnership kind of signifies, uh, like, is it a, you know, like a... A quiet end to RK Bro? I would like to think so solely just because it seems Randy's injury is more severe than they thought. And plus, they really. I think they finally realized that they can't wait on Randy's return mm. to figure out what to do with Matt Riddle now that he's gone, you know? So Got definitely, it. definitely probably looking forward. But uh, as you mentioned, you know. We are still in the Triple H era of uh, WWE, you know, uh, after halfway through the year, I believe, was when Vince stepped down. But we are here, and we're very much seeing, you know, his, uh, how would you put it, just how much, uh, I guess if you want to say control he has, where, you know, here he is in implementing something from NXT onto the main roster in the form of war games. Yeah, implementing something from WCW into Survivor Series, right? Yeah. Or and Jim Crockett Promotions. Yeah. Dusty, Dusty Rhodes gets the big old shout out at the beginning of the show, and we see another reference to him later. Yeah. Very, very interesting, you know, in the fact that people were like, hey, this is a pretty interesting sort of, uh, you know, way to, like how, like how I mentioned, you know, kind of spice things up for Survivor Series, you know. In the in the way like to give uh, the five on five matches a sort of unique stipulation, but uh, yeah, my sort of thinking going into it was uh, always going to be kind of a uh, similar to like a discussion we've had before on the podcast, and that's just uh, how are they going to differentiate each match mm-hmm. from each other so that it doesn't get repetitive or seem, you know, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, kind of more of the same, you know. Yes, and, you know, we'll get into it, but, you know, after watching the women's match and the men's match, I wish they had differentiated them more, and I wish that the women had fought in a traditional Survivor Series match. Mm. Yeah, I definitely saw a bunch of people that, like, felt certain ways where they were like, I would have preferred the Survivor Series match, especially because, I don't know, to me, you know, not to get ahead, but a lot of people, at least... From what I was seeing, they kind of felt let down by the matches. And I think it's either because there are fans who have seen previous ones or there are fans who haven't seen previous ones. This is their first time going into it. And they had a lot of expectations for the way they were hyping it up. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what somebody's impression of these matches were if this was the first time watching it. And I think data shows a lot of people saw a War Games match for the first time on Saturday night. Yeah, but so starting right off, we get into a a feud that is spilled into war games because of just how long 
you know, it's spanned from SummerSlam all the way till now. We have Team Bianca Belair with Becky Lynch, Alexa Bliss, Asuka, and Mia Yim versus Team Damage Control with Bailey, Dakota Kai, EO Sky, Nikki Cross, and Rhea Ripley in the War Games match to start off the night. Yeah. So what were your five thoughts on this good match? Five people versus five bad people. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. I, I funny enough, uh, the one thing I saw was uh, people saying how would they change up the dilemma of Survivor Series, and though it's not fighting over brand supremacy, it's still pretty much you know, you still have your your heels and your faces, obviously. I'm so glad you brought that up, Jack, because I was I was so I caught myself like relishing in the this is the first big Triple H move. It's not Raw versus SmackDown. Yeah. Oh, my heart. It leaps for joy that we were, you know, we're following the storyline. The storyline is weird, but it's okay. You know, it's just, it's, it's, what are we fighting over, Jack? I mean, it's generally like this, like, display of disrespect. You know what I mean? Damage control walks around like they own the place and they don't. Bianca Belair sort of holding it down. Nikki Cross, I guess, is a, you know, is out for her own good or something. And then Rhea, Rhea is maybe the most, like, clearly defined you know, character is like, you know, I'm just a reprehensible person, you know? Yeah. I dress in dark clothes and I'm, you know, and I turned a son against his father. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, very much sort of like, uh, it still very much has the Survivor Series element of certain people just being thrown in to fill up the match, you know? And then there's, <laughs> yeah, and then, and then there's Alexa, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, and so, um, what, what were your thoughts on this match, sir? Oh, they went, you know, we, we you just, you said earlier how, you know, we walk into a card with two matches that are the same type and wonder how they're going to differentiate. The ladies did not hold anything back. They were like, we're going to go crazy in this match. Nikki, right away, right, starts getting all the... All the toys out, all the kendo sticks and all the trash can lids, and we were going to go for broke. This is the opening match. We went for broke, Jack. Yeah, and it was funny because um, I told my dad, I'm like, hey, if you see them bring, if you if you don't see them put any tables in, it's likely because the match later in the night is going to involve it, but then they ended up bringing a table in, so, it, you know, it goes People to show. It's true. And, again, this is Triple H again. We get to hear about the, the the different competitors' experience in war games. Dakota Kai being the first in her team to go in because she's been in the most, right? Yeah. You got Bianca's team who, like, largely have never been inside the structure. You're like, this is exciting storytelling. We're allowed to reference NXT, yay! Yeah, and, uh, you know, they kind of mentioned that uh, Damage Control had the advantage because Dakota Kai and uh, Io were both in every single war games actually i believe mm-hmm. so they had that advantage and uh you know uh it was interesting to see uh especially because you know they gave the heels the advantage to kind of build that up of you know having the advantage over the babyface team there was the right. introduction of all the different weapons you know yep. we had trash can lids kendo sticks there was a spot where uh bianca caught one of the kendo sticks and snapped it in half over her knee, uh huh. Um, I'm trying to remember. I know there was a couple parts where people felt like uh, there was a bit awkward bits in between it all. Like especially, uh, I think it was certain parts with Eo and Oscar that people thought like looked kind of awkward at some points because there was maybe a loss of balance or they didn't land necessarily correctly. You know, it's funny. Like I think the second Bailey got into the match, you're like reminded, oh no, it's a Bailey match, and so like there's gonna be some. <laughs> Some, like contrived spots you're like oh i forgot she's in it and they're allowed to do things so she's going to try to be extra different hey when asuka and io like come face to face there's a couple of moments in both matches where like you just get two people in the ring that you would never get in the ring and the crowd react the same way i react every time the two are in the ring they're like well, why haven't we given these two a special uh you know what are they called uh why haven't they even had a, a premium live event match? Gosh darn it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they they kind of did that a lot throughout the match where, you know, 
obviously the the Oscar EO one on one. Um, they teased um, Rhea and Bianca because that was a match that was supposed to happen earlier this year before mm-hmm. Rhea went out injury. Um, I forget what other. Uh, you got you know Cross and Alexa tying loose ends. Um, Becky and Bailey, who have never had any type of feud, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now they're in one. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, lots of stories sort of driven. And I was maybe most excited about this match because I wondered, like, how the end was going to, like, implicate the future of the Raw Women's Championship. Who was going to get the big pin and who was going to, like, you know, telegraph to the world that they were coming after Bianca. Yeah. Definitely. That was sort of the interesting thing. And then uh, you get a sort of confusing ending. Uh, first off, you know, there's different spots that happen. Like they teased Bianca getting off like a four person like Tower of Doom spot where like yeah. she was going to power bomb like four people. And you were like, uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. But then it leads to a EO getting a, a was it a moonsault? Yeah, a moonsault off the top of the cage. And uh, her and Bianca kind of landed awkwardly there. And that's why I think you kind of saw less involvement from the two in the final sort of spots. And then um, you get Asuka, who I don't think they caught it on camera. She uh, she hit Rhea with the poison miss. So, uh, I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was a great spot. Yeah, and then, uh, like I said, you get sort of a confusing ending, at least in my mind, where... Um, Cross, or, well, to sort of build to the point, you have Cross and Alexa going at it, but then uh, Bliss, uh, who was handcuffed, she handcuffs herself to Nikki Cross. They go through a table. Rhea and um, Mia are going at it, and then uh, they both go through a ladder that's propped in the corner. Yes, they do. And then you have two tables set up. You have uh, Belair and Lynch kind of going against damage control. And uh, Belair hits Bailey with a KOD into the walls of uh, of the cage. And Lynch sets up both EO and Dakota on the tables and leaps off the top of the cage with a leg drop. And Lynch pins Dakota for the three count and the win. And the only reason I say it's confusing is because how many times has Damage Control lost since their debut? Yes, sir. And... And then you, Becky got the pin. Becky, you know what I mean? It ends with Becky. You're like, yay? Question mark? Yeah, definitely real confusing. Can we bring back Yimmy and Yim from the dead so that Becky got the pin? <laughs> yeah, very, very sort of confusing booking in my in my opinion. Like, uh, it's just so weird because, like, you kind of mentioned it. You know, it's like, does Becky really need the winning pin in this match? You know, does damage control need to be the ones taking this pin? And then even worse, I don't know if you caught highlights from Raw, but the one highlight I did catch was that damage control tried to jump Becky and they essentially lost a three-on-one advantage. Oh, no. And so I'm just here, because especially you brought it up at the beginning, damage control is always walking around like they run the place. But other than holding those tag titles, what have they really done except constantly lose and then get embarrassed by Bianco or now Becky who beats them in a three-on-one situation. Golly, hate to hear it. Uh, The only thing that, like, I was appeased by was if Becky pinned Dakota, at least, like, Dakota had been in there literally the longest of anybody. So, like, you definitely have picked somebody who doesn't look weak in defeat. It took a leg drop through a table and however long that match was to put her down. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's definitely... Definitely just kind of confused on what their direction is with damage control. Goodness gracious. But otherwise, a pretty good match. But yeah. uh, I feel like this. I feel like the story for this match at least... Definitely could have been told a lot better through a traditional Survivor Series Absolutely. match. Absolutely. You get people pinning each other out of nowhere or definitively, you know, the three on two or one advantage that, like, someone's got to fight through, you know? Yeah. The only reason you you might not want to go through that is because then we would have 
fully seen damage control losing a 3-2, 3-1, 2-1 advantage at some point, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have been all three of them versus Becky, like last night, and she would have just handily beaten all of them. Yeah, but... Big oof. But good enough match. And uh, moving on to the next match that, again, similar to this one, has a lot of story behind it. We have AJ Styles taking on Finn Balor. Yeah, and uh, again, Triple H is in charge, so we got the returning Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. I just want to reference like how many guys that were brought back are being used. You know, they're used to sort of even the score. You know, between AJ and the Judgment Day, and we get a lot of references to like not just what's happened in the last few weeks. But how these guys relate to each other over the last few years. Yeah. Definitely was something interesting to see. You know, the the sort of mention of, you know, hey, they they all got sort of career spattied to WWE and here's sort of how they connect to one another. Hey, in the entrance, Balor uh, wore, a, you know, a new mask, you know, and uh I think this is new. I don't know if this has happened on Raw, but the Judgment Day music has changed for like the second or third time, and I think it's like a remix of his uh, singles theme. Hmm. Yeah, it's you know dun 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 dun, but it's different. It's like dun dun dun. It's cool. He's cool, Jack. <laughs> Interesting. What's it called though? The one thing I wanted to like uh, mention. Or, like, look into was, uh, I wanted to see, has there ever been a time that they have faced off one-on-one at all, like, in their careers? And the only time was, uh, TLC 2017 when, uh, it was supposed to be Balor versus Bray Wyatt, but Wyatt got sick right before the pay-per-view, and they had to substitute AJ. uh, That makes sense because one ushers the other out of New Japan, right? Yeah. They're never in the same place. Finn Balor's never spent time in, like, Impact. Yeah, That's looking crazy. into it. That's crazy. Hmm. So this was only their second match, singles match of their career. They faced off in different, you know, tag matches. They've uh, uh, they've also tagged with one another, apparently. Uh, I completely... Oh, well, this is in 2022. Interesting. But, yeah. And what and what'd you think, Jack? Uh, I thought they did pretty well. I, 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 I think so, too. I, I very distinctly remember the first one. You know, it was like being an absolute gem, you know? Yeah, yeah that one, it was like, it was, that one, there, of course, there wasn't a lot of build to it because of the fact that, you know, it was right last second. It wasn't even supposed to happen. And funny enough, they got basically the same amount of time in both matches. That's funny. And you know, but you know what the biggest difference was that I noticed this match in 2017 the roles are reversed. I think AJ was the heel and Finn was the baby face. Yeah. And here, you know, Finn play like, it's because I work with kids, Jack, you know? He plays like that obnoxious kid, kind of like, you know, like, you know what I'm like, picturing him climbing to the to the top terminals and laughing, you know? Like, yeah. I'm just like, I got you laugh. It's so funny. <laughs> Maybe yeah. it's because he's paired with Dom, too, Dominic, and uh, they're just like, ah, they're in the hallway, they should be in class, I hate them. It's so good! <laughs> yeah, definitely had a lot of story elements to it, especially all the previous stuff, and then they mentioned, you know, their history and all that. And uh, as far as the match itself, you know, it was real good. They played up a lot of uh, the involvements of all their different group members at ringside, you know. How it how it eventually broke out into them brawling on the outside, you know. Yeah. And then yes. you know it allows for the two of them to just kind of focus on the match between the two of them as the other four members brawl with one another. Yeah, and I think they said again, differentiating this from the only other time they've met one on one. This one had an interesting story where AJ is just destroying Finn Balor's leg. You think in part one, so he can't hit the coup de gras, but also so that he can hit the calf crusher. Yeah, definitely a lot of good uh, body work in this one. And then you get, uh, you know, kind of, I, I think 
it, it's funny because you mentioned, you know, he's working the leg and then the finish is uh, the phenomenal forearm instead. Yeah. But it looks <laughs> good. Yeah. Definitely was a good match between the two of them. Enjoyed it, you know. And uh, I, I still kind of wonder where uh, or like what is the definitive end for this story. You think certainly things are, it's not over yet, right? Yeah. Definitely wonder where they're, they're going, like, in terms of, a this sort of, like, a kind of, well, not only just the story itself, but I'm really wondering where both groups will go after the story is wrapped up. Mm, you know, they are in this awkward limbo. It's not like they can go for any tag titles. Theirs are kind of being held hostage by the bloodline. Yeah. Will be interesting to see, but yeah. move on to the third match of the night: SmackDown Women's Championship. Ronda Rousey defending against Shotzi. Yeah, and Ronda's being flanked by Triple H favorite Shayna Baszler, who's been given an incredible role as just Ronda's bully hype person. Yeah, and that sort of uh been the story for this match is uh. How is Shotzi going to deal with this two-on-one disadvantage? You know, and like, I think if the promo that they showed, it was basically, you know, the entire time it's like proving that she can handle both of them, you know, that she can Mm -hmm. overcome this advantage through her own ways. Yeah, and I thought that came through, like, certainly in the first part of the match, uh, she really got a lot of offense in. Yeah, and she was doing a lot to, there was even points where, you know, because uh, Shayna wasn't the one initiating it a lot of times since, you know, the ref can't disqualify when Shotzi's the one initiating. But you saw her, you know, kind of being uh, two steps ahead of them where, you know, when the ref was distracted or wasn't necessarily paying attention, she was going out of her way to go after Shayna and even take on the two of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any notable spots there stand out to you? Uh, I think for the most part, I think a lot of people sort of saw the more awkward spots than anything. Yeah, there's more than a few of those in this match. Yeah, like the big one was uh, the DDT onto the apron where, you know, it just looked real awkward because I, I think it was mistakes on both part where Shotzi kind of overshot her landing and Ronda was just too afraid to take the spot. Yeah, yeah, that was real awkward. Yeah, that one was real awkward. But then uh, I like the spot where, like, she was kind of fighting both in the corner by the ring barricade. And then mm-hmm. she goes and uh, takes out both women. Yeah, I thought, like, spilling over into that fan section was really good. Yeah. You know, those big, meaty fans in that one specific part of the audience. They're all wearing WWE t-shirts. They're all tattooed up. And we're probably going to see the main event WrestleMania in two years. <laughs> those fans <laughs> yeah that was real fun to see and then um you know the finish is obviously you know uh ronda hits her little judo throw the piper's pit and then an arm bar to retain her title you don't just you don't just hit a little judo throw she hits that judo throw from, from like the, the top rope or second rope yeah and uh you know what too it's got to be shouted out the fans booed the heck out of ronda rousey yeah. But you know what they chanted for? Yeah, I heard they were chanting for uh, Sasha Banks. They sure were. And I'm like, oh, poor Shotzi. Did, uh, did you see what, like, Rhonda had apparently tweeted and what then deleted immediately? What did she say? Oh, let me, let me. Howard, you should have left it. <laughs> she, yeah, that's the funniest part is that she deleted the tweet, but, uh, uh, oh, uh, she she tweeted, keep chanting her name all you want in my matches. It won't change the fact that I'm still here while she ran away. <laughs> and it's funny because everyone was just immediately like, st- uh, like, you know, stand by it. Don't like double down now by like deleting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, real interesting stuff to see that like, you know, a lot of people don't really want to see this rain from her. And then you look at the options that are apparently being proposed right after, and you're just like, ah, what is with this company and not wanting to take risks, take chances? Because I don't know if you've heard, sir, but the two sort of names being discussed for Ronda's opponent come WrestleMania time is either 
Charlotte or Becky? Golly, stop it. Stop it, Jack. And, you know, I'm just sitting here and it's just like, like I said, why can't you take the risk? Because I think you brought it up when Liv won the title, I believe. Yeah. That, like, this was, like, the first time that the title or, like, one of the titles, like, in, like, years hadn't been passed down to some variation of the Horsewoman or Ronda. Right. I tell you what, I mean, I don't, it's Triple H, right? He's in charge. You just let Asuka run down Ronda in Japanese for three months and then just say, it's real. Just go knock each other out for real. Whoever is not knocked out is a champion. <laughs> yeah, you know, or it's like, and I get it because on the SmackDown side of things, like, it's not uh, It's not to show any disrespect to the women on that side, but, you know, the roster on that side is very much still new hasn't been fully established yet, you know, like right, Raquel yes. barely went up, Shotzi right. barely got there, like, last year. Same yeah. with, like, Zia Lee and Aaliyah, you know. And a lot of these names still aren't there yet to get to that championship level, with the only one being Liv who got there this year. Versus, like, the Raw side, there's a lot of women on the Raw side that could be moved over to the SmackDown side and help out. But at the same time, what confidence do you have that they'll be moved over? And elevated to that spot to help out. I uh, am excited about her pairing with Shayna, right? Uh, I hope they're paired for a while. But that's something that, like, you can set up for later down the line, right? Like, we're friends until, you know, we're not. And then Shayna challenges her. And then that would be an incredible match, too. Yeah. But it's like, I, I don't know. They're, they're, they really confuse me in, like, this fact of, like, other than, like, Bianca recently and Rhea when she beat Oscar for the title back in 2021 it's like why aren't we expanding more out of the horsewoman I thought we were supposed to start expanding and the funny excuse I've always seen is people say oh well the horsewomen aren't old enough to be phased out but it's like it's not necessarily phasing them out it's just can we include more variety in challengers and champions themselves that and can we involve the horse women, right? I think about this a lot whenever Sasha Banks is brought up. Can we involve them in meaningful storylines that don't involve the titles? Yeah. Because I'm hard-pressed to think of, like, Sasha's definitive, you know, uh, feud that didn't involve the title. I'm honestly hard-pressed to imagine any of the horse women's feuds without a title because... All of them, basically, I mean, Becky was the one that took the longest to really get to, like, the title yes, scene. Yes. Uh -huh. But, like, all the others, like, you think of their prominent feuds, they all involve a title. And you can't, especially, yeah. like, with Charlotte, you can't imagine a feud of hers without the title being yeah, involved. I would give it to Becky. And, the, and the, the story was, I hate Charlotte and all the love that Charlotte gets. But it's just that she also had the title. <laughs> yeah. And I like, like. Her, like she also had the like running story of oh Rhonda you think you're the baddest person around town like they're fighting for the title of baddest person around town and they just also have the title hostage <laughs> yeah and then uh you think about like Bailey's it's like they've always pretty much involved the title even when she was feuding with Sasha it's like it involved some type of title at some point or another um her feud when she finally turned heel after being babyface for so long it involved Charlotte and the title and yeah. it's like, I don't know, for, for four women who define this generation of women's wrestling, they sure can't do much without the title involved. And that's not on them, that's on the bookers, obviously, but it's like, you... And, you know, like, I want to I wanna maybe take a step back, and for anyone listening, wondering what else, what other reason is there to, to fight, right? Um, I want to think about, like, the pinnacle of wrestling around the 2000s, it's that Attitude Era, right? And you had Triple H and Kurt Angle fighting over Stephanie. You had Stone Cold fighting, you know, Rikishi because hit him with his car. You know what I mean? You had, like, cac like the Triple H matches with Cactus Jack. Sure, it was a title, but it was also, like, you know, this grizzled vet with one more in him, you know? Yeah. Uh, Kane and the Undertaker is a story of a, a couple of brothers with a very checkered history that, like, carried a story, you know? 
Yeah. Just saying. It could be done. Dang it. We're getting closer, Jack. We didn't have nobody wearing a stupid Raw or a stupid <laughs> SmackDown shirt in this show. Yeah, you know, I definitely want to see... I mean, it's kind of tough because you want to say... I want to say I want to see more variety in the feuds, but then it's like we've been through almost at this point, I want to say 100, 100 years of wrestling or something like that, where it's like it's tough to have variety when everything is like a rehash of the original. But like... Jim Cornette said that after seven years, you can do something again. <laughs> yeah, and it's like I, I kind of look at like the way different promotions do certain things and I'm just like... You know, it, it's very easy to implement them with, you know, some of your biggest stars and not have it involve a title. Like, right now, technically, it involved them losing the titles and then trying to challenge for them again. But, like, we saw a sort of, uh, if you, I, I won't say unique because I know the moment I say unique, a bunch of people are going to come up with, like, hundreds of examples of where it's happened before. But, like, Keith Lee and and uh, Swerve have finally split as a tag team, but it didn't come from Swerve turning on Keith Lee or, you know, really any sort of, like, turn. It came from just the disagreement of sort of strategy, you know, where Swerve wanted to be more of a heel, and Keith Lee was like, no, if we're we're a tag team, we got to do the honorable thing. And when Swerve slapped him, Keith Lee's the one that walks out on him instead of it being usually the heel walking out on the baby face of the tag team. And that's great. You got two established characters. I'm sinister, you know, and I'm going to do things by the book. Gosh darn it. Yeah. And do things in a reputable way. Yeah, and the way they furthered that, you know, and I know a lot of people are hearing this and they're like, why is he so excited about this? But, sir, you know how much of a fan I've been of these two for the longest while. So it's like, Absolutely. it's like uh, they had a promo. Not only after the fact, like, you know, like when they do those Road to Dynamite videos and they have like little promos, they had one for there. And then they also had something on Dynamite where it's like the promo before Dynamite to kind of show just how much do it by the books Keith Lee is. He's still giving Swerve the opportunity to explain himself first before, you know, fully, uh, fully uh, completing the separation as a tag team. He's still giving him this opportunity where he told them, but still showing sort of a, you know, the smartness to him to not just be so blind to the tactics. He tells them, come to me and fully explain yourself. And if you don't choose your words wisely, I'm going to beat the hell out of you because I'm not a fool who thinks I'm just going to let you step over me and fool me. What a guy. Yeah, so it's like there's a ton of feuds that they can do outside of this title picture without involving the same old women and allowing others to shine. Golly, Jack shooting for the the same old women. Your old hags, ladies. Step aside. And just so people don't call me out, I think it's the same thing for the men as well where, you know, there's certain people who it's like in the men's side of things. They're involved in the same feuds over and over and you're just like, what can we do differently, you know? (laughs) but at least we saw like some of that and like it's not to say that we don't see that with the women but the issue is we see it a lot with the women on the mid to lower card and never really the women in the upper card i'm just saying i'm just saying and it's the same thing with the men we saw we we saw drew in wrestlemania jack wrestlemania goes hollywood ronda rousey defends her smackdown women's championship against thunder rosa Look at you, cowards. <laughs> That's oh, man. Be a stiff old match. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, yeah, that that sort of our rent with this whole thing is just, you know, because of the rumor plans, and who knows, things can change. WrestleMania is still four, three months out, but, like, we, we've already come to expect that, you know, and again, it was during the Vince McMahon era, so who knows if things will be different with Triple H. But, like, we've come to expect that, like, come this time, everything's already decided. The Royal Rumble winners, the path to WrestleMania, and the WrestleMania main events. Mm-hmm. So Great. all all we can just hope is that there is some change in the fact of, like, hey, can we have more leniency towards not having and, things definitive? You know, and I want WWE to be their best selves so that we get the most enjoyment right we're following this path that we've seen before what old Renew new japan right i mean is it going to be something new and different and novel or is it going to be 
Naito versus uh, Okada again? <laughs> or is it going to be Okada versus White again? <laughs> yeah, and it was like, and it's funny you bring it up because it's like, we kind of saw change coming in the form of like 2021 where it was like, hey, Will Ospreay has the title, and now Shingo yeah. has the title. Yeah. And it was like, hey, we're getting new names thrown into the picture, and then you look at right uh, now. And then they got scaled. <laughs> yeah, then then you look at right now. Uh, Ospreay's U.S. champion, Shingo's the king of pro wrestling uh, title thing, and you're just like, what happened? How did we get back to Okada and Jay White and Tanahashi? Goodness gracious, the more things change, dot, dot, dot. I am excited, Jack, though, for Will Ospreay versus Kenny Omega. It's already on my 2023 top 10 <laughs> list. <laughs> yeah, you already know that that's going to be one of the first matches to get the year started off right. Kenny Omega came out with straight fire saying, I'm going to beat you in your, in your auto-translate. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> He said, I'm going to help you save your company. And Will Ospreay goes, you can't even save your own. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the funniest part during that whole trios title tournament was just anytime uh, he would come out, he would have Justin Roberts say all these things like, he is better looking than Will Ospreay. He has more five-star matches than Will Ospreay. He has this and this more than Will Ospreay. Uh, incredible. Incredible. <laughs> you know, it's kind of not as incredible uh bobby lashley versus austin <laughs> theory versus seth rollins for the united states championship yeah you want to talk about confusing booking my goodness goodness gracious how much time we got jack we got about two minutes and 50 seconds on this episode so i think in the next episode we talk about the confusing booking that is the united states championship we can Very talk much. about the missing booking of the Intercontinental Championship. And then we've got the main event War Games match. It's the Bloodline featuring Sami Zayn versus the Brawling Brutes, Sheamus, Drew McIntyre, and Kevin Owens. Yeah, so thank you all for joining for this episode. Tune in to part two where, like Mr. Solis said, covering the United States Championship match in the main event of Survivor Series War Games.